Today, I'm going to upgrade this Athlon 2 to a Ryzen, and I'm not going to reload Windows. Stay tuned. In my 20 years of working on computers, one rule has remained true. When you replace a motherboard, you reload Windows. This was believed without question. That was until Windows 10. With all of its faults, Microsoft got one thing right. Windows 10's uncanny ability to be able to detect new hardware when it boots. When I first heard about this, I questioned it. So I tested it on several computers myself before I tried doing it on a customer system. And so far I've done it on about a dozen systems and haven't had a single problem. So today we're going to try it again and see how it goes. So this Athlon 2 my customer has had for quite a few years and it's worked great for her but it's time to upgrade it. We upgraded it to Windows 10 recently with an SSD drive and it runs great. Unfortunately, the video drivers aren't supported in Windows 10 and it's made for kind of a lot of trouble for her. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna replace this with an AMD Ryzen. And to start with, we're gonna shut the computer down and then we're gonna start taking it apart. So we disconnect everything from it. And we pull the computer over. First thing we do is take the side panel off. But if you're attempting this, you've probably already done that in the past. Now the first step we need to do is disconnect everything from the motherboard. Start with the serial ATA controllers, all of the front header plugs. And then the power supply plugs. And with those out of the way, we need to remove the screws that hold the motherboard down. There's not much to removing a motherboard from a computer. It's actually pretty easy. Once we get all these screws out, we're going to pull the motherboard out of the case. And that's all there is to it. Now we're going to replace this with the new board. Now you want to make sure before you install the new motherboard into the case to bench test the motherboard. I've already done this and I have a video right here where you can actually watch that being done. So here's the motherboard that we're going to be using. So what we need to do now is we need to change the IO shield as well as make sure the standoffs are the same on this motherboard as they are in the old one. So let me get the IO shield in and we will take a look at the standoffs. So what you do is look at the placements of the standoffs on the motherboard and in the case and it looks like no they're actually not the same so we're gonna have to change one of the standoffs. So I'm just going to remove this standoff from where it was and move it over to where it needs to be for the new motherboard. All right, now we're ready to install it. So to install it, we take the motherboard, we lower it down into the case, line it up with the IO shield. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Alright, once we have it fitted, we put the old screws back in. Now, I don't tighten these screws. 
until I get all of them in. And the reason why is because in a lot of cases the motherboard might have to shift a little bit in order to get the screws to line up with the standoffs. So what I would do is screw each screw in loosely and then go over all of them and tighten them after you're done. And then once we got the last one in, then I start tightening them. And I don't know if this really matters, but I typically go in a circular pattern for no other reason than that I know that I got all of the screws and I don't skip one. So now that those are done, we're going to plug all of the cables back in to their new homes. You may have to shift some cables around a little bit to make them fit because they're probably going to be oriented a little bit different than they were before. If you're lucky, you won't have to re-cable manage the case, but even if you do, it's not that big of a problem. So the hardest cables typically to put in are the cables for the front panel because for some reason motherboard manufacturers don't want to make a standard which would be really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to line all these up right here. I've done this enough to where I already know where each one goes so it's not really difficult make sure if you have any case fans or anything you plug those back in as well and there we go it's all ready to go so we're gonna to try to fire it up right now okay so let's hook everything back up so if this works it can save us an awful lot of time having to reset up the computer which is very nice actually so let's see what happens So at this point, the first time Windows 10 boots up, it's going to actually go through and redetect the drivers. So we may fast forward through this section. Okay, and there we go. It's booted into Windows. It still doesn't have all of its drivers installed, but it should just take a minute or two for it to reinstall all of those. So now what we need to do is run Windows Update and see if it can find all the drivers that we're missing. I'm going to let Windows Update run and I'll be right back. Now that Windows Update is done, let's install the rest of the drivers we need with the motherboard driver CD. Just put the CD in. And let's find out what drivers we still need. So it looks like we have a couple of things to still install. I'm going to run this CD real quick here, and this should take care of the rest of it. and this motherboard CD does not support this operating system. Thanks ASUS. Well, what typically happens happened. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this computer here was 32-bit. And as we know, the Ryzen processor doesn't support 32-bit because the graphics card doesn't have drivers for it. So this computer is going to have to be reloaded with a 64-bit version of Windows. So unfortunately, in this case, this didn't work. However, Windows did 
boot up just fine. And if this would have been a 64-bit computer, it would have worked with no problem. So if this helped you, then like this video and subscribe to my channel. And remember, hit the bell icon so you can get updates when I upload new videos. Thanks for coming.